Nation, Fit and 10, welcome to day 30. No, not day 30, day 40. 30 days to go. And, um, you know, normally at the beginning of week five, this is where we tend to see a drop off or a lull. Uh, I never actually mentioned that. I mentioned more of a drop off, but actually more of what we see is a lull in the challenge. And this is common. And then once the challenge gets more towards the end, um, you know, there, there might be the odd person that, that disappears. Uh, or we see the opposite of that. We see people get right back into the challenge, knowing that it's going to end very soon. And so a reminder to you that uh, you can still make mega massive change. There's still a lot to go, but we are under 50% left in this challenge. We are approaching the four week mark. And uh, before you know it, we'll be into the teens and then done. Okay, feedback, let's get into it. Name something specific you can improve upon for the following week. Getting in more sleep. I'm definitely not getting enough rest. And it was interesting to hear that that affects heart rate. As I'm noticing, it's been more difficult this week to get up to my higher heart rate goals. Um, yeah, so this can be, uh, this can certainly be related to sleep, although not necessarily. But if you find that you have a hard time so for example, if you're doing your intervals and you, you notice you have a hard time getting your heart rate up, uh, or you find that uh, you have a hard time with your heart rate even recovering afterwards, this can be as a result of not getting enough sleep or just in general being run down. And uh, heart rate variability, I'm not sure if it's mentioned in here, is it? Affects heart rate. No, it's not. Um, but sort of mentioned in terms of heart rate, uh, heart rate variability, HRV, you may have heard of this before, can be an indication of you know, how run down you are. And uh, your, uh, if you've got a smart device, a uh, smart watch specifically, or maybe a ring, like an aura ring or something, these can tell you what your HRV is, or at least they'll give you a, a, a pretty good estimation on what your HRV is. And, um, you know, this is, um, HRV is, is the amount of variability that we see in the heart rate throughout the day. And I always thought this was strange when I first heard about it, because I'm like, well, shouldn't your heart rate always be the same? Uh, but no, we should be, I mean, clearly we're going to go through periods where maybe we're a little bit stressed, where, you know, maybe we're on our feet, or maybe we're moving around quickly, or maybe we are exercising, or maybe we're sleeping. All these things are going to um, produce uh, or should produce different levels of heart rate. And so throughout the day, we should be seeing a variability in that. Even if we're just resting, we should see a variability in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the rate at which the heart is pumping. And when we don't see that, when we see the heart just sort of at a standard pace all throughout the day, this is usually an indication of the body being overworked. So sleep can play a big, big role in this. Um, not just the amount of sleep, but the quality of sleep that you're getting. And of course, there are ways to improve the quality of, of sleep. For example, having a sleeping ritual, um, such as allowing yourself to relax a couple hours before you sleep at night and going to bed at the same time, uh, staying away from blue light, sleeping in a dark room, a dark cool room, um, showering before bed, all of these things are going to lend to a better quality of sleep. Taking magnesium before bed, there's a product I, I carry called Yin Reserve. I've talked about it before. That will help to bring you into more of a of a uh, what we would term a parasympathetic state, a more relaxed state. But there's also other things that will help you get into more of that state. And uh, I just made a quick list here. Let me pull it up. Um, so. Some other ways that you can improve your heart rate variability or just you can think of this as more like getting yourself into more of a relaxed state, which is important. We don't want to be in a heightened, chronic, stressful state. Uh, avoiding alcohol is going to help with this. Avoiding caffeine is going to help with this. Um, uh, meditation, which by the way, meditation is you know something that I never really understood uh, and always kind of just you know, put on the back burner. I, I will still admit, I don't think I've really fully meditated. Although there's, you, you, you could argue and say that there are certain 
maybe activities you'll do in life, which may be considered meditation. But I read, I brought the book here. I just read this book. This is kind of interesting, but maybe you've read it before because it is a it is a bestseller. Um, it is The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. It's a very interesting book and um, he is really, really huge on meditation. Um, interesting story altogether, just his life story really. I'm gonna read uh, Untethered Soul next. Uh, that's another book he wrote. But anyways, meditation, something you may wanna take up. Uh, grounding, getting your feet into the ground, getting, you know, basically, you know, uh, in the earth, uh, in the grass, you know, spending some time grounding, uh, walking in nature, uh, Epsom salt baths, re uh, relaxing massage, um, reading, family time. You know, you'll notice with a lot of these things that they are pulling you away from, from distractions in life right? Um, you know, reading, family time, uh, walking in nature, etc. A lot of the things, a lot of these things are going to pull you away from the things that are, um, you know, distracting us and, you know, occupying our minds with, you know, uh, for lack of better description, maybe just, you know, utter rubbish or things that aren't helping us. Um, so make sure you take the time to do some of these things. Um, you know, in my opinion, avoiding alcohol is very easy. You just don't drink it, <laughs> okay? Um, easier said for me, I guess, than maybe perhaps for you. Um, but you know, some of these that you may wanna put some work into, for example, family time, uh, walking in nature, um, maybe grounding or spending some time meditating. These are things that you may want to put more effort into as more of a holistic health, um, uh, uh, excuse me, holistic health habits. I just kind of made that up, but it's three H's in a row, kind of neat, right? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so, you know, something to think about there. I know that for those of you in this challenge who are younger, you may perhaps not fully appreciate this. I guarantee you, as you get older, you will appreciate this more. All right, um, 737, okay. Let's read this next question, although I probably will not answer it. Let's see. I am having a birthday party next week and another birthday event the following weekend, and others are organizing it for me. <clears throat> I'd like to decline food with as much grace as possible. I know people will be missing things. I know people will be making things, and I have shared that I'm on a different diet, but I'd like to be prepared. Any thoughts on celebratory foods? Celebratory foods uh that i could bring for myself and won't break my calories or macros okay so you know what here's what i would suggest and i know because this person's very good about sending me their food journals um this person's been very very good with their food and i would just tell you that enjoy a birthday just enjoy it okay if you are ver if you, i mean if you've been sending me your food for the last five weeks and literally it's been on the ball pretty much every single you know time. There may have been the odd thing, but I know this person is very, very minimal. In this case, by all means, give yourself a free meal and just enjoy it. Okay. It's, it's not going to kill you. It's when you do this on a regular basis that things change. Okay. Doing it here or there is not going to be, uh, is not going to break the bank by any means. Okay. So give yourself a break. Even the mental break will be good for you and just enjoy yourself. And this goes for everybody, by the way, okay? This is the whole idea, really, I think, is just like everything in life, you, you have to work, but then you have to reward yourself. Okay, I think working and striving towards things is important for our health. And, you know, diet is one of these things. Work towards it, you're, you're gonna be thankful that you did it, and then reward yourself, okay? Temporarily reward yourself, and then know that you're going to get that reward again on a, on a regular basis, like, you know, something like once a week is reasonable. And then, uh, and then put yourself right back into it. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe I'll say more on that tomorrow, but I'm going to wrap up the video here. So let's get to the message of the day. 
Um, all right, so why don't we talk about, it's not really mess of the day, why don't we list five things? I'd like you to list five things that you are thankful for. You can send this to me in your feedback. But here are five things I'm thankful for. I am thankful for my health. I am thankful for the fact or the, 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 the opportunity of choice, right? I have the means to make choices. I'm not forced to really do anything in my life. Um, and maybe that's just a reflection on where I was born and when I was born. So I'm very, very thankful for that. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for all the people that I have in my life. And I'm thankful to you guys for uh, joining me in this endeavor. Uh, I guess more so you guys are doing it, but um, but you know, you're supporting me. And so I'm very thankful for that. And um, you know, hopefully I am helping you. So send me five things. I think I, list, I listed five things I'm, not, I'm thankful for. Uh, I'm not thankful for, I am thankful for. Uh, okay, I'll list one more just in case I wasn't, I didn't list five. The roof over my head, all right? And this is really, really, this is really, really important for you to be thankful for what you have. And, um, you know, it sounds, um, again, maybe, maybe a little bit cheesy or corny, or maybe it seems like, yeah, it's not really going to make a difference. But really, if you write down every day, the things that you are, th you are thankful for, the things that a lot of people don't have that you have, this really changes your perspective and allows you to, I think, allows you to um, have a much more positive perspective on life and ultimately will help you to be a happier person. Okay, it will help you in your feelings, your overall feelings of happiness. All right, because we're really, we are all really lucky. We are among the luckiest people on this planet. Top, I would argue, probably top 99.9% .9 of people on this earth. Maybe more than that. Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself for the love of God. Get some gratitude and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.